Question. Is using a roller to paint a door an excuse for somebody who can't brush a door? Because they don't know how to brush a door properly. Yeah, it's quicker, but do you get a better finish with a roller than a brush? Let's see. Carry on watching this video and I'll give you a bit of a sum up what I think about using a roller on Doris the door. Is it an excuse because you can't paint a door with a brush? Answer the question. Welcome fellow painters and decorators of the interweb. This is Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. The professional painter and decorator on YouTube. We're at about 4,000 subscribers yet. Well, I might be near it or over it. And if you're watching this in the future, we might be 10,000 subscribers. That would be ace, wouldn't it? Um, let's just give a quick shout out. Super thanks. There's a button down there. There's a few of you that are pressing super thanks and um, sending me super thanks. I'm sending you a kiss. Thank you very much. I know who you are, you know who you are, but it's much appreciated. Right, let's get into this video. You've seen me with Doris the door and I'm back in my studio. I'm trying to do videos where I'm out on site, out on jobs, wherever I can be, and then I'm trying to come back, let's call it home, in inverted commas, back in the studio with Doris the door. <sighs> Getting a lot of support for Doris the door. It's weighing a ton. Do you know when you say about Doris the Doors needing to go on a diet. Do we need to burn this door off yet? Because <laughs> it's weighing a ton. Not that much paint on it. But um, I'm painting it and I'm painting it with brushes and a few of you shouted out and says, oh, get some rollers going, get some rollers. I'm not really one for, I do, of course I do. I'm not really one for using a roller on a door because I quite like paintbrush application on doors and I'm quite quick. I could probably coat a door up in about 15 minutes and you'll go, ah, yeah, you can do it with a, a roller in five. I know you can, but there's something about the actual application of putting paint on and let's make me make excuses now. I don't always use a roller. I do sometimes, but I'm going to give a shout out now to um, Scott over at Paint Monster because Scott over the last few weeks, months, um, He's seen the channel, Paint Monster. It's not sponsored, it's not support. Nobody's changing hands, uh, money between hands. It's just a case, like with a lot of products that I'm trying out, well, some products I've actually got in stock in our own workshop, but there's some people, decorators, suppliers, uh, reps, that are actually saying, we've got a sample, Phil. Would you like to have a go with it and see what you think? Can we convert you onto our products or anything? And you know what I'm like, I want to give my honest opinion of first time trying it, literally out the packet. If you're a DIY, an amateur, you be using it. Oh, like a professional painter and decorator, if you'd never used it before, you'd be using it like I'm using it, blind. And I think that's not a bad way of testing stuff out. We we have some sample brushes sent to us. We pick them up at the painting and decorating show. Our local merchants might just give us a, a bit of a sample to try out. So I'm using it like you'd probably use one as well, but I'm videoing it for YouTube to try and make me millions. I'm waiting for that YouTube brush video that goes viral. Yeah, anyway. Uh, but today, Scott at Paint Monster has supplied me with some rollers, some brushes, as you know, you've probably seen the Gnaw brushes. So these are now Gnaw rollers. Now I've got one of these little, what are they, four inch? They're a four inch frame. It's on the chunkier, what do they call them? I don't know what you call that. Is that an inch diameter? Yeah diameter frame it probably is it's the bit chunkier ones now I quite like these sorts of rollers because when you are doing doors the circumference of the rotation is that little bit more than the traditional four inch rad roller that's quite a small it's small diameter quite a small um, sleeve that when you put paint on them before you know it you've rolled over the surface and you're wanting to load up again so today I thought on Doris the door 
I've gave it a, a nib down and a dust down because we've had a lot of satin paints and eggshell paints recently and um, you know what I'm like I do half the door I tape it off so you can see half so I'm not faffing about for a full door but the, br um, the brush I've got brushes on my mind is that a song something on my mind no you're always on my mind you were always on my mind always on my mind don't even go like that right this is no brush if you don't know this is a no roller now no a big in north america canada side they're a big manufacturer of brushes coming into the european market i'd not heard of them prior to um, being contacted but i'm going to read the the packet because that's what you do that's right it. right so it's in the packet and this is the traditional um the ultimate in professional tools because it's the nor uh, super smooth finish for all types of paints that's your water-based and your oil-based now you know i'm a big advocate now for pushing water-based paints because in the uk and stroke europe there's a lot of decent water-based paints out there however anybody's managing with oil-based paints i know you say the gloss level's there but you've got to compromise on something and there's a lot of decent water-based paints carry on reading um smoother semi-smooth surfaces yeah so yeah gets over anything ideal on doris the door now um it's a woven fabric i'm going to open it and let's just see how we go with the water-based paint the water-based paint that i'm using is helmy undercoat i'm going to go back to that buffy greeny color just to be a change over the white so we'll see it it'll be interesting to see how it picks up the paint holds the paint I open it up it's all live like going live Ooh. smell it like a smell with brushes um, it feels nice now you tell me what you do do you wash these out before you use them or do you do what I do wrap some tape around them to pull that bit of a lint um, fabric fluff off the surface what do you do Sometimes it's nice to wash them out, sometimes put some tape around it. Don't use them straight off. Well, you could do if you wanted. Right, I'm sliding it onto the dedicated frame. The frame also is from Noor. Goes on nicely. It's tight. There's a joke in there about nun's knickers. Or did I say, last I did a video and I mentioned about my father-in-law's wallet, didn't I? Was it my father-in-law? Or was I talking about Dave? Dave and his wallet at the bar. Both of them then. <laughs> right, this on, let's. That comes off all right, it's tight. It's not going to slip on you. Right, I'm just going to pour a bit of tape around it and I'll come back and um, see in a few seconds. Simple as that. Um, let's see what came off. Actually, next to nothing. There's a little bit on there bit of ex next to nothing so let's not worry about it let's see how we go um i've got my paint i'm working out a, a paint tub there's next not a lot of paint in there so don't be shouting at me saying phil phil you've got a load of um, paint in a three liter uh, no i've not i'm just loading up now if you've got a dedicated um roller tray ideal so I'm just working that in. It's actually picking up nicely. Just put it into my bucket and just rolling it on the sides because the sides are flat. Right, we've got a, um, got a moulded door, Doris the door. Right, how do you, give us some comments. How do you roll a door? There's various ways of doing it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the mouldings with a brush. I'm going to get that brush out. I'm um, going to do the mouldings with a brush and then I'm going to roll the flats and the, do you know what these are? I mean, the door's upside down. That'd be the top rail. You've got, uh, it's actually, they call them a mulling rail. Um, that would be the lower mulling rail if we'd got the door the right way up. So you've got um, top rail, it's actually the base. Oh, yeah. Top rail, mulling rail, you've got mid rail, and then you've got the styles on the side, which if there's a latch or a hinge, you've got a lock um, style latch style or hinge edge and then you've got your mouldings and then your panels so um, let's just get my brush out 
I've got keeps in the family. I've got that nice heritage and um, over my left shoulder. You'll see a review on that. Really nice brush. Bit longer um, than some brushes, but it's actually nice. Smells good as well. So let's just do that moulding first, and then let's crack on with rolling. It's quite simple. It's actually a lovely brush to apply paint. So I've done the moulding. It won't cover well it brilliantly because we're over a white, and this is a a green that's a little bit, a little bit see-throughy. It's neat. Neat helmy. Helmy undercoat. Right, see it there. So we've done that moulding. Put plenty on, don't brush it out. Lay it off with the tips. And go like that. Shall we push it and do the other panel? Is this like watching paint dry? I can see a bristle from when I painted this door last, which is a while ago now. Now I had a college lecturer, Mike Myatt, and it was always the running joke. If you saw a bristle on the surface and you could get it off, it's just flick it off with his brush or pick it off if it's dry and he'd go, hair today, gone tomorrow. And this guy was bald and we all used to crack up laughing. Hilarious. Right, I've worked in the roller now. Let's see what this is like. See how we go. Look at that. Up and down. I'm just feeling it. Let's try the next one because it's quite a bit of paint. Still on there, just load a little bit more up so I don't run out. Some people actually pull the mouldings in at the same time, don't they? Let's see if you do that like that. What do we think? Get a little bit of an orange peel, don't you, with a roller? Now this is the first coat, so I'm expecting to see that orange peel show through with the white underneath. Does that matter? I'm not putting too much pressure on, but I'm getting enough on. Not bad. Put a bit more paint on. Let's go across the top now. Lay it off in the full strokes, you don't want to be stopping on it. Not too bad. When you do your roller in, on your doors, do you actually lay off with the tips of the bristles just to get a nicer finish? Or do you keep it as a roller finish? Coming down onto my tape. All lay off. What do I think? So far so good. Until it's had a second coat. I'm not doing the edges. I'm just doing the face for you. Now what's nice about this, with it being a bigger 
circumference diameter of the roller you can actually roll a little bit further with it you're not running out of breath i.e. paint quickly But it was skinning the paint. Right, now I lay off top to bottom. Let's bring in, let's see what this roller finish is like. I'll zoom in. Now, as you'd expect, you see a little bit of orange peel. Orange peel is what you get from a roller. That's why I prefer to lay off with the tips of the bristles or actually apply the paint by the brush. But that is actually drying. Now we've got decent quality paint. I'm hoping that that's going to level out. Now with this being the 10 mil, I know a lot of people, there's different thoughts on this. Use a 10 mil to get your undercoats on and then drop to a five mil nap, length of the um, roller sleeve to do your finished coats, to get a finer finish on that final coats. So this is a 10 mil nap. Is it a little bit orange peely for my liking? As it's drying, quite possibly. Be interesting to see what it's like when it's dry so do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to get the blower heater on which i've got in here at the moment let's let that dry and let's come back and um have a look at it so see in 20 or oh, we're not because we'll blend out and we'll come back to it we'll come back well all righty have you been for a cup of tea have you had a sandwich or something while i've been gone Beauty with Helmy, if you've never used Ticarilla Helmy, Everall Aqua, don't matter, Ticarilla, finishing paints, Helmy 30, Helmy 10, they dry really quick. Now this is Helmy undercoat, so there's no number next to it, it's undercoat, just class it as Helmy, it's classed as the primer undercoat. Now that, what we've been, I've had a blow heater on it, it's been half an hour. In between, while I've been waiting for that dry, I've done a bit of a sample piece down there doing the same sort of thing but with brush seeing how that compares but you know when I left you I said about a bit of a orange peel effect the mottled now it has done what I'd expect it to do it's left a mottled finish that I can just see through that undercoat onto the white I totally accept that because we are rolling and we've got a bit of a satin finish underneath but where it looks a little bit orange peely pimply and again it's like smell of vision you've got to take my word for it on this that's actually flowed out I wouldn't say there is an orange peel no there's not there's not a noticeable orange peel finish on there you can slightly see where the mottled um, finish of the roller is but not an orange peel not what you'd imagine you know when you sometimes see jobs where a, a proper DIY amateur has put paint on too thick with a roller and it leaves it literally an orange peel we we're not seeing anything like that so um, let's crack on with the second coat now but the second coat I'm moving on to Helmy 30 that was the undercoat for my Helmy 30 which is a bit of a buffy yeah greeny colour mucky green let's call it mucky green I uh, don't know what the colour is with the reference number but again I'm going to do these mouldings with a brush and it's that heritage brush from uh, North we're still keeping with that I've washed out my roller cleaned out nicely it's a little bit damp now the word on the street is when you use a roller it's nice to use a damp roller not wet a damp roller have you heard the same thing Comment on that because I'm going to try it 
with this now being damp. I'm going to load the roller up like I did before because I've got another paint tub that's only got a bit of paint in it because I'm using it for sample stuff. That is now moist, damp. Well, not moist, moist, but you know, damp. So let's have a go at that. Start with the uh, mouldings. I'll fast forward it so you're not boring. Oh, not. I'll fast forward it so you're not getting bored of me doing it. Then we'll review it at the end. Do you know what? That didn't go on too bad because I think really I'm going over the correct undercoat for the finish. Let's let that dry and I'll come back to it and let's have another look. And uh, the only thing I can see is because I've rolled off that side of the bucket um, paint tub, I've probably picked up a bit of darker pigment and I can see a little bit of darker pigment coming. Not to worry because I want to give the, um, a second coat to the top two top coats because that's how you do it with Helmy, a decent undercoat and two top coats and it looks really good. Um, but so far, so good. I would say, I can see a little bit of orange peel there but let's see what it's like when it dries. Hockey dockey. That's Mexican. Hockey dockey. Or is it uh, Manuel? It's Manuel. Was he Spanish or Portuguese? You know, faulty towers. Hockey dockey. Right, I set the question at the beginning. Do people use a roller on doors because they don't know how to brush a door? Am I right or am I wrong? Because I know how to brush a door and you've seen the video there explaining all the different parts of a door and how to paint it and what process. Now I've used this 10 mil nap roller, quite nice from um, Nor. Now I know some of you are shouting at me, a 10 mil nap's ideal for putting undercoats on and then I really should be dropping down to uh, a 5 mil nap for the finish. Now since I've seen you I've actually put the third coat on because we've done a Helmy undercoat and then I've done two Helmy 30 top coats. Now you saw me do the first top coat and I said I'd come back to you. Well I, I'm coming back to you now after doing a second, so it's been an hour or so, I've had heaters on, and I've gave it the second top coat. Now, the process of water-based paints, if you're new or coming back to painting and decorating or new to painting and decorating, a lot, and I'll say most of them, are for water-based paints are actually an undercoat and two top coat finishes. Now, I'd gone over an eggshell stroke satin wood finish in white. I knew it wouldn't cover for two, so well it should do because it's dark but the three coats will be spot on and it was so we've done an undercoat and two top coats i've got my apprehensions about orange peel now let me just have a look you know i'm going to say it as it is i can see a slight orange peel slight i'm not on about something textured it doesn't look like a soft artex you know the textured um Oh, of 70s and 80s and early 90s it's not a textured finish as much as that but I would actually say there's a little bit of a a slight orange peel to it because I can see it. I'm looking for it now a lot of people will say that's like you get with a spray finish now if I got my spray finish fine finish spray tips going I don't think I'd have a spray finish like that I don't think I would do but on here I can just see a little bit of a texture. That's all I'm going to say. A little bit of a texture. That quite possibly is because we've done three coats using a 10 mil nap. Now, I'll put it out to you. This was a nice roller. I've got no problems with that. Am I using it? I'm going to put it... Am I, am I doing it wrong? Am I using the wrong roller? Am I using the wrong roller? I'm giving you the wink because I know the questions and answers. 
Am I using the wrong roller for doing doors? Is there a roller sleeve I should be trying that would give me a lovely roller smooth finish on a door? And I know this is a wood grain door. Doris the door's got a slight wood grain to it. But this door has a slight texture to it now because I've used a 10 mil nap, correct? We're correct, aren't we? On the whole, where I've brushed it, we've done three coats it's gonna cover, is a nice finish. And that heritage brush, I'll say to you, give it a try. If you see one of these in your local paint merchants or you can get your hands on one from paintmonster.co.uk or is it .com, can't remember. Paint Monster, Google it. Um, Get your hands on one and try it because that's actually been a nice brush. I think there's some nicer brushes from Noor if you've seen those videos. Have a look there. But a slight orange peel is that acceptable? Standing face on, you don't see it. Looking across, I can just see a slight texture. Um, I've used a dark colour, and if I use the word flocculation, if you don't know what the word flocculation is, it's when you get darker pigment colours, and particularly when you use a roller, you can pull that darker pigment to the surface of the paint you're putting on. So when it dries, it looks a little bit um, mottled. I can just see a little bit round here where the darker pigment of the colour is a little bit more on the surface. But flocculation, if you don't know what it is, if you're a... I'm not using the old... The old I'm far from wanting to use the word old school. I think if you've been to college, you'll probably know what I mean. Or if you've been trained by somebody that's been to college, or you've just been told by somebody like Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator, in brackets, has been to college and got advanced craft. I'll tell you that, just because I feel like saying it. Um... You're now knowing what flocculation is. It's when you use dark colours, you get it with blues. You can get it with greys um, and reds. They come to the surface um, a little bit more when you roll it. I can see a little bit of that just on some edges, not not major. And it, again, that could also be a little bit of pickup from how um, the darker colour pigment was in the roller bucket. But finish-wise, Helmi 30, lovely. Would I do rolling the doors with a 10 mil? I'm saying, I would, no, probably not. Has it covered nicely? Yes, three coats, it's covered nicely. It wasn't bad for two. The third coats really gave it that body as you should do. A little bit of a creepy run there. Because I caught it at the top. But on the whole, that's not bad. That roller sleeve isn't bad. Would this be better for using emulsion on the walls so that's the question i'm finishing with is that a better roller answer me because i don't know this is a new roller to me is that sort of finish from this roll from this roller because of that can you see because of that 10 10 mil nap quite possibly what should i be trying to get a better finish on doors from a roller that's my question. I know we've probably been a bit of a long video on this, but we've got to do it, haven't we? Some videos there. Give us some comments, some videos. I don't ask you to subscribe. I ask for likes if you like the content. If you like these videos, give us a like. See you on the next one, everybody.